Welcome to Polk Place. I'm Brian Lacey and joining me in studio from Chapters Health Foundation in support of Good Shepherd Hospice is Paula Kramer. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Brian. It's always good to see you. Always good to see you. I love making the call and saying, hey, you can come see me. Well, I need to talk about this. Absolutely. And who shows up? Here I am. Yeah. What, what about that other guy? You know, Adam? Is oh. that his name? Yeah, I yeah. think Stanfield, yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that. I rarely see him myself, yeah. you know, which is not necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> Just well, kidding, Adam. Yeah. Just tell him, tell him, next time you see him, tell him I said hi. I sure will. I sure will. He wanted to be here today, but he got caught up in Citrus County. So Exactly. Well, listen, for those that might not know, talk to me a little bit about Chapters Health Foundation. What exactly is it? I sure can. So Chapters Health Foundation was um, founded in 2018 and the purpose of the foundation is to support the fundraising efforts under Chapters Health Systems, which is our parent company. So we have a multitude of hospice affiliates across our state um, that provide hospice care and a continuum of care for families and patients that are in well, experiencing terminal Ill illness and end of life situations. So many of our programs are unfunded or underfunded, meaning that our payer sources require that we have them, but they do not provide a payment back for those services. So that's where I come in and the foundation comes in to fundraise for these extra programs. Some of those programs um, deal specifically with the families themselves, uh, bereavement issues. Talk to me about some of the things that you reach out to the families and, and help them cope with. So, you know, our, agree, our bereavement services first are free and they're also for anyone in the community. And for particularly for Good Shepherd, we serve Polk Highlands and Hardy County. Um, recently, we just finished a facility in Lakeland, our Bethany Center for Grieving Children. It started in Lakeland 30 years ago. And that is a location where we offer some of these community bereavement services. Another thing that we do is we're in very close contact with the schools, the counselors, the mental health workers, the social workers, and we get a lot of our community referrals, especially for the children, from our school, you know, Polk County School mm -hmm. Board. So, and we make sure that we're in connection because many times the families don't understand that the resources are free. And so we try to really do our community advocacy and um, outreach as strong as we can for, for our bereavement services. Cause there's been a lot of loss recently, you know, in the last few years, um, the pandemic really made some, for some tough situations for a lot of families. So it's not just about hospice loss, it's about any type of loss. Let's talk pre-pandemic, pandemic, and, and post-pandemic. What was business like for you guys and, and and what did it take to do to the day-to-day -day operations? So, you know, pre-pandemic, we were serving roughly three to 400 um, family members from ages six to 16 on the children. And then of course we had um, group support, we had individual support, but when the pandemic came along, um, it really blossomed into, we all had to get very creative on FaceTime, Zoom, um, phone calls, any way that we could to connect with families. And then, you know, it was during COVID, it was a little more difficult to recognize those that had experienced a loss related to COVID because everybody was so kind of shocked and stricken by the way things had kind of panned out. So as time progressed through the pandemic, we started getting more and more notifications of people that had been impacted, maybe directly with the loss, as related yeah. to the pandemic, um, or maybe more indirectly, because maybe their loss might have been, um, you know, a friend or something like that. Um, so, but then also the grief related to um, just the impact of COVID. Lots of people were impacted, you know, financially, losing their jobs, um, being the isolation portion of it. Um, so there's been a lot of opportunities to try and help people through several of our programs that we have. Um, when they you know are struggling with how to cope with that that loss through the covid the other thing that post it's interesting because the numbers have really grown after the fact because the word's starting to get out that what oh wait a minute i was impacted you know i lost a friend mm -hmm. and so forth but you don't realize and so our numbers have actually increased we're doing a lot of surveys and a lot of checking to to see 
the lives that we are touching. So the, the back end portion of it related to um, statistics is a pretty interesting, pretty interesting area. We're tracking a lot of information. In the post pandemic era, federal government came out with ARP money, mm -hmm. filtered down to local uh, governments here within the Board of County Commissioners. Money was made available to nonprofits such mm -hmm. as you guys, and, and you guys applied. Talk to me a little bit about the process. Talk to me a little bit about how the money will be used. Absolutely, so you know, the process was really interesting. Um, the Polk County Board of County Commissioners, when they presented this opportunity, they um, have been very diligent and very focused on making sure that the funds are being used to truly impact families and our community um, individuals that have been impacted in COVID by COVID in some way. And so we were looking at it from our grief service and bereavement perspective. And our Bethany Center, as I mentioned before, there were a lot of elements related to the new center that we were able to apply these grants to. But more specifically, the favorite part that I am um, excited about is we were able to expand our reach to our schools through our grief toolkits and our community grief bags so that if a child or even a family member of a child never can, make, never can cross the threshold at Bethany Center because of these grant dollars, we're now able to go to them. So even if a school counselor identifies little Johnny um, as experienced some sort of loss and they're noticing a change in school, if his family decides or makes the choice or cannot get him to in-house grief services, he'll have a grief bag that'll be provided to him. These toolkits will help the counselors that are out there. So if they never, the child or family never makes it to us, they're just an extension of our services. We're really excited about it because um, we actually have um, 38 of the mental health workers across the school, across Polk County, coming next month to tour the Bethany Center and get their free toolkits and their care bags for the kids. They'll be for little, middles, mm -hmm. and bigs. Mm -hmm. And this, this grant funding from the Board of County Commissioners helped us do that. They are very excited to come visit with us. We got just about a minute left. Paula, what I'd like you to do is inspire those that need the help, seek the help through you, and those who can help giving of their time, giving of their resources to you inspire them at home to get involved. Yeah, so, you know, the thing I like most, um, that's the most important piece is that our grief services are free and they're open to anyone in the community that, ha that has experienced a loss. It doesn't have to be an immediate loss. It can be a, um, you know, a friend or even a coworker, but we encourage individuals to reach out. Don't assume, oh, well, um, I'm okay. It's always important to talk to somebody. I just recommend that individuals reach out to our bereavement department and talk to them about what's offered our Camp Braveheart. We have group therapy, we have individual therapy. If you don't wanna come in, a phone call. We welcome you to reach out and, and take part in the services that are available. Well, Paul, I wanna thank you for coming in and, and sharing the information, and, and, but most of all, for what, what you guys do within our community. Absolutely. Come back and see me again soon, please. I will certainly do that. We'll see if we can't get Adam back in here. Chapters Health Foundation is a 501c3 not-for-profit organization that supports the work of Chapters Health System, including home health, palliative medicine, hospice, and grief services. Chapters Health Foundation supports services throughout the Central Florida region. The foundation provides care for the uninsured and supports grief services for children and families who have lost a loved one. Now, if you need more information on what they can do for you or if you can help them, give them a call, 863-583-3641 or look them up on the web at chaptershealth.org.